That's right, it is time for another IKEA Hacks video. I love IKEA, so let's get hacking. What's up? I hope you're enjoying the season. My name is Jorge if you're new here and I love all things home decor, including DIYs. And I was recently at Ikea, which by the way, I can be there for a few hours, but I saw some things. I was like, oh, these could be some good projects. So I grabbed them and I'm excited to share these because today's focus is I want to keep things very minimal. Personally, I'm just very simple in my home decor. I don't like it to be too much. So we're going to keep these minimal and also focus in on making them feel a little bit more upscale without the upscale price. I think these turned out pretty nice, so let's get into it. Let's just go ahead and start off with the biggest project, and that is we are going to upgrade a coffee table. Now, you could probably do this with any table. I'm doing this with the La coffee table. I just like the modern profile of it, and it's actually substantially sized for $50. Now, this comes in a couple of different colors, but it doesn't matter because we're going to skim coat this with this sort of concrete uh, texture sort of thing. I think it's pretty cool. It's definitely not new. It's new to me though, um, but it's been around for a few years. A lot of people are, are like um, transforming their countertops, their laminate countertops with this stuff, which I think is amazing. I have my own twist because we are gonna change the base and kind of make this a little bit more special. So let's get into it. To be honest with you, I thrifted this a few weeks ago, but that's all right, it's still the same table. Now what I'm gonna do is change the base, so technically you don't need to build this, you just need the top. All right, so this is the table that I got. I actually thrifted this, but you can still get this at Ikea. It's one of the cheaper ones, kind of laminate, very lightweight, but we're gonna transform it and make it feel a little bit more upscale. So I am going to keep it modern, keep it minimal, and kind of want to try a concrete effect to it, and then maybe we'll do something different for the base. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be only using the top, but for now I'm gonna keep the legs just to make it easier to work with, and then I'll remove them later. Now, what am I gonna do for the base, you ask? Great question. I'm gonna use this eight inch form tube that I, you can find at Lowe's or Home Depot. And essentially this comes in 48 inches in length, and I'm gonna cut this straight into thirds, which is gonna make it 16 inches, which will make the coffee table the standard size. It'll basically keep the same um, height as the, the coffee table. just go ahead and try to make a line a straight line there's probably a better way to do this and if you know let me know but this ended up working out for me and then just gonna take a good old-fashioned saw and just cut that it's pretty simple I mean it's just cardboard anyways now that we have those cut nicely it is time to prep our tabletop for our skim coating, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, but I'm going to just lightly scuff this up with some sandpaper. This will allow the product to adhere nicely. Um, nothing too crazy here, just a light scuff up on the edges and the top. Now to make this look like concrete, we are going to skim coat this with Henry's Feather Finish. Now this stuff is, I think, intended to patch and repair subfloors, but this will also work for this kind of project. And I also, again, have seen people do this to their countertops. Now, I'm just going to follow the instructions on the box, which says to use two parts of the Feather Finish to one part water by volume. I also dropped in a little bit of color pigment just to give it a warm undertone, which you know I love. When I mix this together, um, it's basically kind of you want like a frosting uh, consistency. It's going to be kind of fluffy to some extent. You do want to work fast because this dries in like 15 minutes. And trust me, it dries in 15 minutes. So we want to work fast. Maybe you want to work in small sections and then kind of mix up another mixture later because you probably will not get the whole table done in one uh, mixture unless you work super fast. So here I mixed another mixture and then I'm doing the second part of the table. And honestly, I think I saw this in another tutorial, but a good analogy to this is kind of think of it as frosting a big cake. Um, and you want this to be as smooth as possible. So I first spread it with the smaller putty knife and then I went in with the larger or I guess wider one just to get this nice and smooth. Very satisfying, honestly. 
I will say I started with the top first and then I worked my way to the edges. Those ones kind of required a little bit of time, being careful not to overdo it, but also we want to make sure that you get good coverage, especially on the corners. After the first coat dried, which for me, it was about an hour, even though it says 15 minutes, it just depends how thick it is and also the temperature outside. All of those things will affect the drying time. But once that first coat dried, I went in and did a second coat. Um, and again, just trying to spread this as nice and evenly as possible, working in sections and then working to the edges. And honestly, it's okay if this isn't perfect. I like the imperfections of this sort of um, technique and then afterwards I went ahead once it started to dry out a little bit I went in with my hands and kind of just like buffed it out just smoothing out the um, edges and any rough patches that there is now, when it comes time to do the base these uh, cylinders I could have just used these forms and actually filled them with concrete which you might expect from me but I thought I would do something a little different and try to skim coat these and it ended up working out in the end this will make the table a lot lighter especially if you are maybe a renter or maybe just don't want something so heavy to move around this is a good option for you and so I went ahead and did that first coat on there. I kind of honestly just went with one coat for this, but just went heavy on it. And then after, once they started to dry a little bit, I wet my hands and then kind of just smooth out the texture as you can see here. And it just makes it a lot cleaner to look at. And honestly, I kind of am happy with this. Good morning, it is the next day and I just let everything fully dry and I'm really liking it. Now before I put it together, I'm just gonna lightly sand it with some 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out, making sure that it's smooth to the touch. Now I also need to figure out how I'm actually going to put it together. Maybe I'm gonna glue it, I don't know. As you can see, this is looking mighty fine and I slightly sanded it. It's nothing too crazy. I don't wanna go down to the bones, but Essentially, what this does also, it not only does it knock off sort of any unevenness or rough texture, but it also reveals the layers underneath, which it kind of creates this rawness to it, which I appreciate. And I don't know, it's something kind of visually appealing, the texture, you kind of want to touch it. Um, and if you don't like the look of concrete, you can definitely go heavy with a color pigment, maybe make this look more like a travertine, like a like a brown beige color. But now is the time to remove those legs and those were really useful just to prop it up while I worked on the tabletop. Um, I did have some trouble with one of them so I had to use a clamp to remove the screws, which I don't know if those come in the top or not when you buy it. But essentially this is what the table's gonna look like. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea. In fact, I don't know if this is my cup of tea, but what I love about being here is trying out new techniques, trying, things that maybe something I wouldn't gravitate towards. And so this is, I guess, more of a really postmodern table. I'm not sure what the best glue would be for this, but I ended up using Gorilla Glue here to adhere this to the tabletop and it ended up working just fine. So I applied a good amount around the edge here, flipped the table upside down and just kind of placed them randomly, but not randomly. We don't want this to tip over, but I see a lot of postmodern tables with three legs that are kind of, in this style, not for everybody, but I don't know, it's interesting. Then I put some heavy objects on top to clamp it into place while the glue cured, which takes about 24 hours, but it'll dry in two hours, according to the instructions. Keep in mind, this is essentially a cement furniture piece, and just like any real wood or maybe marble furniture piece, it can stain if you spill something on this, and you kind of have to be okay with it. I'm gonna try to protect this using a sealer. In this case, I'm using Thompson's water seal. This is a multi-surface thing. It will essentially keep, protect it, but also it's gonna look like dry concrete. It's not gonna make it look like wet concrete, which I like. Also, if you try this technique on maybe a countertop, you definitely wanna use a food safe one, uh, sealer. So that's something to definitely do research on. I can't really recommend a specific one because I haven't tried it, but here's how I styled it. Definitely a fun little project, not necessarily something I would gravitate towards, but I think that's why I'm here. I'm here to try out techniques and yeah, enjoy. <laughs>
be honest with you, I'm not sure if this project's going to make the cut or not, but if you're watching this, it probably did. And I'm going to be upgrading the Navlinge pendant lamp. Um, and this one is about 13 US dollars. And it is a hardwired lamp. You could probably put this in a kitchen or dining room or wherever, but honestly, you can put this anywhere. Like you can put this above a console, maybe like a little reading area. Um, and so I am actually going to make this a plug-in lamp because it's currently hardwired. So it'd be super renter friendly if you're doing that. Also, I want to take it up a notch and change the lampshade. This is honestly a really nice lamp for the price point. Maybe even spray paint this matte black, but it comes hardwired. And in order to make this plug-in, we're gonna use just this plug-in um, cord from Ikea. I'll show you a little bit later how to do that, but I'm going to make a pleated lampshade, which some people love, some people really hate. And I don't know, I'm just gonna use this piece of paper, actually three of these pieces of paper, colored paper that I got from the craft store you can probably use maybe poster board and i'm gonna just glue these three together to make it a long piece of paper here i am cutting this to 12 and a half inches for the width just enough that it covers the cone lampshade but you can definitely make this longer if you would like and then i'm gonna glue these together using i guess stick glue is that what it's called stick glue yeah stick glue um just to make a one long piece of paper be honest with you I have never made a pleated lampshade before so who knows if I'm actually doing this right or not but it ended up working out for me now you can fold the pleats um, as wide or as thin as you'd like I kind of eyeballed three quarters of an inch and I'm just folding it back and forth accordion style it takes a little bit of time but kind of satisfying at the end it kind of reminds me of grade school honestly once that is complete, you're going to glue both ends together just to make one continuous pleated lampshade. And then you're going to turn it inside out or I guess outside in. Because uh, as you can see, I left some of the stickers on there. They're hard to remove. So I don't want to see them. So I want to make sure that those are facing inwards and you can just push it down essentially. Then you can just pop that right onto the cone. And if you wanted, you could just leave it as is. But I'm going to secure it and just put some hot glue around the top of the cone. I'm not going to put it anywhere else. I don't think it's necessary, but again, I'm no pro here. I am not your pleated lampshade specialist, but this is what worked for me. And that's pretty much it. If you really wanted to, maybe you could have fun and maybe paint the tip of the cone, maybe matte black. I don't know, but this was good enough for me. I really liked it. Just keeping it simple. Like I said, to make this a plug-in lampshade, you're going to stick in the plug-in part of the cord and you kind of have to really push it in there just to fit it through the hole but it ends up fitting and that's it let's not make it more complicated so let's take a look at the final result Large scale candles feel very luxurious and high end. Maybe it's just the size of them, but they can be kind of expensive. So let's make our own and I'm gonna be using a serving bowl. Now this serving bowl is actually $8 and I think this is genius way to get that high end look without paying that high end price. And we're gonna use some candles from Ikea, of course. You all, I really like doing these voiceovers sometimes. I just can go at it. Anyways, here is the bowl that I'm using and I ended up using three of these I guess pillar candles. These are the ones that are like two and a half inches in height, I believe. And I ended up using all 12 of these little candles. Now to make the melting a little bit easier, I put them in a plastic bag or a couple plastic bags just to hold it into place while I hammer this and basically just break these chunks into smaller pieces. Again, this will help um, it melt a little bit nicer. So I'm bringing this inside and I'm going to remove the wicks that are kind of loosely laying around there. You could maybe reuse them, but they don't have the bottom part to it. So we're going to put them aside and use different ones, which you will see in a minute. You all, this is a second time I've made candles. You might have seen my other Dollar Tree video actually where I made a large candle. 
this is going to be very similar to this so i'm not going to go too heavy with the explanation but essentially i'm just taking an old pot that i don't care about and putting the candles to melt there and i'm just using some skewers to evenly space on the dish here just using some masking tape to hold it into place i'm not a professional candle maker i kind of don't know what i'm doing but again this worked for me I went ahead and got some new candle wicks which I will link down below and essentially these are going to be evenly spaced um, as you can see here. Maybe you can pause the video and see how many I used but I did five rows essentially. And then once that fully melted, um, I melted this over low heat and it took maybe about an hour to melt. Then I'm just taking a paper cup which I recommend use one that doesn't have spots on them that the color will end up melting into the thing. I ended up just putting the wax into the candle, let that fully dry or warm, or cool down I should say. It took a few hours but once that is complete you can go ahead and remove it and trim down your wicks. I'm just using scissors since I don't have a wick, cut, wick cutter I guess. But that's it everybody, a pretty significantly sized candle for about $20. So let's take a look at the final result. I feel like some people are going to like this project and some people are going to hate it. Now a few weeks ago I DIY'd some sort of milking stools but they're really just little stools and they're very popular right now across a lot of different interior styles and I love these because these are a great way to, I don't want to say fill a space but if you don't know what to put I think these are cute. You can put them like in the living room, you know, wherever. And so when I was at Ikea, I saw this little stool actually in the kids section for a few dollars. I was like, wait a minute, this looks very familiar. So. I grabbed it and honestly this project super easy you can do this in like five minutes I'm not even kidding and this is a nice way to get sort of a vintage look stool for less honestly this might be the easiest furniture piece from Ikea that you can ever build you just pop these little legs into place and that's it so you can get this in any color, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna spray paint this. I'm gonna just spray paint this a flat black. Now this spray paint is a paint and primer in one which I can paint on plastic. And honestly, it's pretty simple. You could just paint this any color you would like. Maybe you can go with like a beige color, a taupe color. But I thought it would be kind of fun and I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick this up on the camera, but I went ahead and also once that first coat dried, I went in with some like dark brown and kind of just splotted or splashed or just lightly spray painted over it. It created sort of a nice little texture. Again, I don't know if you can actually see it, but that's it everybody. Very neat little stool that actually is kind of trending, honestly. These little stools are everywhere. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did so, hit that like button. Also, let me know which of the projects was your favorite or if you would do something a little bit different. I really have fun making these, so if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, go check out my playlist on other IKEA hacks that I think you might enjoy, but have an amazing day, enjoy the season, and come say hi on Instagram. I love it when you all come chat with me. Anyways, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.